we're going to have a crack at adjusting the carb today. Um, the we're going to adjust the the choke mechanism on on the carb. Um, but yeah, just a quick overview of what a carburetor actually does. Um, you don't get these on cars anymore. <laughs> um, they've been replaced by fuel injection systems since the early early nineties, I think. Um, but yeah, this is how this is what used to be on on engines uh, in years gone by. So what what a car carburetor actually essentially does is it it atomizes the fuel that that goes into the engine. Um, fuel can only be burnt in a in a suspension the suspended form. So it it basically functions like a spray bottle, like a perfume bottle, like a so you know when you spray something like an aerosol, it just goes and and uh, all the particles end up being suspended in air. But this essentially does the same for fuel. So. Uh, it also controls the fuel air mixture going into the engine as well. Um, so it's, it's it's pretty simple device, but it's it does a lot of fu uh, functions and it does them all completely mechanically as well. Um, so this is kind of where the fuel comes in from the tank. Um, this carb is off a beetle, I believe, um, but I just had it lying around, so it's kind of good to to demonstrate on. Um, so the fuel comes in there, uh, and then it's sprayed uh, down the throat of the carburetor there. Uh, there's a little butterfly valve here that controls the amount of air coming in. Um, and then you'd have your air cleaner sitting up here. Um, this down here, this spring, is uh, linked to the accelerator cable. So the accelerator cable runs the entire length of the van um, right down to your foot. So when you press the accelerator, this gets pulled back and uh, basically actuates the mechanism which sprays fuel down into the into the engine so you can kind of see that working there is opening this this other valve at the bottom to spray fuel into the engine um, <clears throat> so there's a few things that the carb has to do automatically as well uh, it has a choke uh, mechanism on it um, and this is essentially uh, its function is to basically allow adjust the fuel air mixture dynamically uh, along with the rate at which the engine is warming up so when you start the engine um, the choke is cold and it's letting um, it's letting uh, as little it's letting more fuel into the engine um, than it would be when it's warm so it's letting the maximum amount in uh, and it's letting the least amount of air in so it's it keeps it rich keeps the mixture the fuel air mixture rich at the start uh, and the way um, the way it accomplishes this uh, is quite clever actually um, so there's a little uh, there's a little bimetallic strip in there which is uh, connected to the battery here uh, so when you turn the key on and um, this comes on when you turn the key uh, this gets power and the strip starts heating up when electricity is applied to it um, and as it expands, it gradually moves this uh, butterfly valve forward and forward and forward. Um, well, actually, this butterfly valve is, is on a long bar. It's part of a long bar that runs through here. Um, and that bar keeps getting rotated. And this bar also rotates this uh, stepped cam here. Um, so essentially, while the engine is idling when your foot isn't on the accelerator uh, it's essentially acting like another foot uh, if you will uh, to, to keep the um, accelerator keep the throttle slightly open um, so that the engine can idle well and then as the engine warms up it needs you know the the, the mixture can be uh, leaner so more more air less fuel so it keeps on adjusting it down 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 until the bimetallic strip reaches the end of its travel and then uh, the butterfly valve is fully open letting the maximum amount of air into the carb as possible um, and then the accelerator uh, the accelerator pin is down at the lowest point letting the least amount of uh, fuel in as idle as possible um, so sometimes this mechanism has to be adjusted it, it gets out of whack for whatever reason um, also I, I've heard tell that you know you need to uh, adjust in uh, in relation to the seasons as well. So during the winter, you might have a different setting, slightly different setting, because uh, this is affected by uh, ambient temperature. So during the summer, you might need a different one, or during the winter, you might need a, a different one. But um, yeah, to, to be honest, like 
um, in, in Ireland I've never had to do that really I've never noticed kind of seasonal temperature swings um, affecting it too much maybe in other countries it, it does um, but but here I, I've never had to really do it um, but the way the way you do the way you do adjust it um, is it's quite a uh, quite easy it's um just you just undo these four these three uh, little screws here there's a kind of a triangular clamp holding the the canister with the bimetallic strip in place and just loosen those th these screws um, it's also important that you do this when the engine is cold as well because otherwise if the bimetallic strip is already worn you're gonna sort of mess up your adjustments there so it has, the engine has to be stone cold when you do this um, <clears throat> So we kind of the way you do this is you rotate uh, you rotate this guy back and forth and um, start by sort of taking the spring off here like that so the mechanism doesn't spring back up and um, you get that out of the way and then you can kind of you can kind of move this and it will move the uh, it should move the um, butterfly valve as well. If it's, uh, sometimes it can be a little sticky. You might have to like free it up a bit. Um, you can also find that this choke mechanism gets stuck as well. Um, yeah, this one is kind of stuck. Uh, it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. And I'm just like wiggle it back and forth a bit. Yeah, this one doesn't want to move, but <laughs> anyway, I mean, it, it's yet. Yeah, let's see. I'd like to be able to demonstrate it here, but this one just seems to doesn't seem to want to cooperate. But um, anyway, yeah, when you do, when you have the mechanism freed up, you move this back and forth. You will see this whole thing kind of moving along with this. Um, I think this is probably why this was taken <laughs> was uh, taken off the car because it's a uh, joke is not working. Um, but yeah, they do. They do break. The mechanism does can does break sometimes. The the spring can get warped inside there. Um, so yeah, you can. But you can usually find like replacement parts, just these top parts to to, to fix it. Um, yeah, it doesn't want to move. But uh, I know for a fact the one in the van does move. So um, we're we're okay there. We'll be able to adjust it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. What you want to do anyway is is uh, when the engine is cold, the, the you want to adjust the carb, you want to adjust the choke such that the um, the butterfly valve is almost closed and this cam is on its top step as well. So yeah, we'll we'll go onto the van now and do that. I'm gonna just adjust the choke now. Um, in order to do that, we just need to take this little uh, air pipe off here just to get access to that. That's the only thing we need to take off. So um, just loosen a couple of these uh, screws, these clamps holding it on here. Um, <clears throat> I love these little screw clamps. They're uh, they're actually original Volkswagen clamps, and it's nice to see at least some original fixings left on the van. It's always cool when you find things like that. Uh, cool, so just. Using the other end as well. she pops okay um, now what we're going to do next is just loosen these uh, three screws here and disconnect the automatic choke from its power so we'll do that now so we just pull that little this little guy this little lead off here and just 
can move it around. So these that tiny little flathead screws here sort of um, completely unscrew these you don't want to pull the choke canister out we just want to release this little kind of triangular clamp here which holds the choke in place so that we can adjust it just before we can adjust it we just need to just take this little spring off the accelerator cable here actually it's easier to just undo it from the top just so it doesn't snap back on us um, <clears throat> now what we want to do is just make sure that this um, that this little stepped cam here is kind of as high as it can be in relation to this pin that hits it. So um, we'll just like, you see, see if we move it and see it going back and forth there. So I I'm rotating the choke canister on the other side here. It's the easiest way to do it is just to gra grab the little um, where the spade connector connects to it and then you can rotate it pretty easily. So uh, we'll just give it a little rotate here just get it up to the top and then um, now what we will do is uh, you kind of only do these in small adjustments so we'll we just adjusted it there um, and we'll uh, then we'll we'll take it for a test drive now um, after tightening all this up and then we'll see how it behaves right just back from a quick drive so we're gonna now put a timing gun onto the van just to check the timing after we've uh, put those new gaskets and things on. Um, yeah, so just need to connect this uh, this guy up here um, to the engine. So <clears throat> the way this works is we just uh, take some power off, uh, just connect up the negative lead here to the to the battery. Post on the top of the alternator. Okay. Now, this thing has a, an inductive pickup on it. Um, that you put that onto, uh, you just clip it around so the wire for um, spark plug number one, uh, as it as it says on the thing, hopefully. Um, so. Just trying to spark plug number one is at the back here. Put that on there. Now we're just going to start the van now and uh, point the light at it. But uh, before we do that, we need to just uh, disconnect this vacuum hose here. Um, this is part of the timing procedure. You want to disconnect the uh, the vacuum advance on the distributor. <coughs> get a more accurate reading yeah the way you adjust the timing on this engine is uh, you generally <clears throat> you take off this you just loosen this uh, clamp here around the distributor and then you rotate the distributor back and forth to kind of advance or retard the timing um, depending on where the engine's sitting um, so you'll, you'll see the timing kind of moving forward when you uh, turn the distributor to the to the right uh, if you turn it, yeah, if you turn it clockwise, that, that advances the timing. If you turn it anti-clockwise, that retards the timing. Um, and yeah, you'll see that kind of indicated down here on these pulley pulley marks. Um, not all engines have these pulleys. This is one I installed myself. Uh, it's just handy to have it because you have the marks there. Um, a lot of engines, stock engines and things, would have the old just uh, unmarked pulley but they would have a little notch in them indicating where top to the center is or uh, somebody might have left a bit of whitehead paint or something on there to mark where it is um, so yeah it's handy to install one of these pulleys it really does make adjusting this a lot more accurate um, okay so we'll just start the van up now and then we'll adjust the timing I just had a bit of an issue here the timing light is not working on, on spark plug number one for some reason I'm getting anything from the from the from the gun. 
there's this warning light coming on here on it. So, at first I thought there might be something wrong with the timing gun, but I don't think so. Um, so, let's try it on a different spark plug. Try it on a different spark plug wire. It's working. You see those flashes there. But we can't time it on those cylinders, so we're going to have to get into that spark plug number one and see what's wrong. It could be the lead, it could be the plug is gone, the gap is too big or something, so we'll have a look at that. It might have found the issue. Uh, I think it's the spark plug itself that's the problem. Um, because I swapped over the leads, I uh, put cylinder number one's lead onto cylinder number two and vice versa, and then swapped them at the distributor as well. And yeah, I, I uh, didn't get the same issue on so on on the on that lead on cylinder number two, so it it was working fine. So there's uh, there was no problem with the lead itself, but I still had the same issue on on cylinder number one, even with a different lead. So uh, yeah, it's it's more than likely the spark plug that's that's the problem here. Um, it's unusual for them to go, uh, but they do sometimes. Um, so I have a new set of plugs um, on order. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to actually just walk into motor factories here and buy these in, in Ireland. For some reason, they just don't, they generally don't stock them. Um, these are B5HS plugs. Uh, they're an unusual, sort of an unusual type. They usually have to order them in. Um, they're, they're sort of a sh short reach one. Um, they often look like kind of motorcycle plugs or uh, something you put into your lawnmower. Um, but as for the condition of the plug, uh, when I took it out, it's uh, it's always good to inspect the condition of, of the spark plug because it gives a good indication of what's actually going on inside your engine. Um, so this one seems quite oily, which is uh, somewhat concerning. Uh, so what that means is here, according to this handy chart we have, uh, oily coating can be caused by poor oil control. Oil is leaking past worn valve guides or piston rings into the combustion chamber. This can cause hard starting, misfiring, and hesitation. Um, all of those symptoms sound quite familiar, so I think, um, yeah, there could be some oil going where it's not supposed to go. Uh, and I'm hoping it's not some worn piston ring because that could get um, very, very complicated and painful. Uh, but uh, we can check that by doing a compression test on the cylinder to see what uh, you know what what's the what's the compression rating on it. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll try that first um, just to, to rule out the worst case scenario. So we're going to um, do a quick compression test on the engine here. Uh, I have a compression tester hooked up to cylinder number one. Uh, this is the one that had the oily spark plug in it. So <clears throat> we're just going to check that the cylinder is getting kind of good compression. I think a good value for these is usually anything above 130, uh, 130 PSI, I think, yeah. So yeah, th this just checks kind of the health of the cylinder, whether all the seals are good in it, you know, whether um, nothing is worn or anything like that, or uh, the valves have gone out of whack or been burnt or anything. Um, so yeah, we'll just do this quickly. Um, this involves kind of cranking over the engine but not starting it. Um, that's why we, we've disconnected the main kind of spark plug wire from the coil to the distributor. Um, this, yeah, this stops the engine from starting. We just want to build up pressure in the cylinder. Uh, so we'll, yeah, we'll crank the over engine over now and then uh, we'll see what the reading is. Okay, stop. Right, perfect. That's a hundred and thirty psi, I think. Um, yeah, so that's a pretty good value for that cylinder. So that cylinder's okay, which is good news. Um, so I think we may have just had a, a dodgy spark plug. So got off lightly there. I think um, if you yeah, if you have like a, a broken cylinder um, <clears throat> like that, if you have a very low compression value or no compression. Uh, it essentially essentially means kind of a top end rebuild of the engine, um, which is engine out and uh, cylinder head off, um, which is not too difficult to do on these vans, but it's an absolute headache. Uh, the van will be off the road for a while. Um, yeah, so good. I think we seem to have dodged a bullet there.
I'm going to stick in another a new spark plug and then uh, we'll do uh, a test drive on the van and see how it goes. What I'm going to do is just give the, give the, spark, give the spark plug a quick test here. Um, I have a, a multimeter set up here and we'll just uh, check the resistance of the spark plug. Um, so you do this with a, a multimeter just by, um, you set the, the dial on the multimeter to resistance to ohms. Um, so you set that to 20,000 ohms. Um, yeah, it's usually the best setting for it. Um, so just do a quick self diagnostic here of the, of the, um, of the multimeter, just to make sure the multimeter is okay. So we just touch these, uh, we, we touch the two probes together, um, just to make sure that it's working. So we're getting a, a reading of zero resistance. So we shouldn't be getting any resistance along this circuit. Um, I'll just put the light on on the multimeter here just to give it a, display it a bit better. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do is just check the spark plug here itself. So I just attach the the red uh, positive probe onto the top of a this is a, a new uh, working spark plug. So we have a control here for our experiment. Um, <clears throat> just touch the red probe to the top of the spark plug and then we touch the ground um, black negative probe onto the electrode at the end of the spark plug so it's very important you actually touch that this tiny little bit here this this end of the spark plug because you can get a um, you touch any other bits you can get a, a bad reading so yeah we'll just check that and we're getting a reading of zero so that might fluctuate a bit, but yeah, usually zero is uh, means that it's good. It's getting good resistance. Sorry, no resistance. So yeah, this spark plug is fine um, as it should be. It's new from the shop out of the box. Now, this is the suspect spark plug. So anything above zero in this is pretty bad or if the resistance fluctuates or anything like that. So let's just give it a check. So put the positive probe onto the top of the spark plug and then the negative probe onto the electrode. This spark plug is toast. Um, yeah, I was getting a bad reading there initially, an OL error reading. Um, and now it's just giving a, yeah, it's showing a resistance of about 1.5 throughout the whole thing and it's it's moving up and down a lot as well, which is not good. Uh, yeah, so this, this spark plug is a goner. Um, so that is probably the reason why um, we were having rough running there because this spark plug was just not sparking <laughs> essentially. Um, so we were kind of almost running on three cylinders essentially there, uh, which does explain a lot of things with the way the van was handling. The thing I noticed with these new spark plugs, um, they yeah they don't actually go onto the leads properly. They just sort of pop back out. So they're not getting a good connection. Uh, I think it's because this little uh, tapered end here uh, is too, it's just not fitting in to the connector in there. Um, so I think what we need to do is just modify it a bit. So we unscrew this top part here, turn it upside down Screw it back onto the tip of the spark plug. And then it should go in and does. Cool. Straighten up. Yeah, so it's uh, still not running very well. Um, yeah, there seems it still seems very sluggish just to, to take off in first gear. It's like it's getting bogged down or something. So I think um, <clears throat> I, I think the timing 
timing could be an issue still. So now that we actually have a working spark plug, uh, we should be able to check the timing and uh, see whether that's correct. Um, and then we'll also just check the carb one more time as well, because I think it seemed to be it seemed to be running at a little bit too high of an RPM there. So it could have been running a little bit lean. Um, sorry, a little bit rich actually, uh, because yeah, the choke butterfly would have been closed. Um, so yeah, we'll check that. But um, anyway, this will be, um, yeah, that'll be another video. So uh, thanks for watching.